Reading through the Revelation. We are in Revelation chapter 10. Chapter 6 through 16 is really God's judgment upon the evil systems of the world and how he is trying to get people that have not accepted him to repent, to turn from their evil ways and come to him. So here we have another interlude or break or respite in chapter 10. Then I saw another mighty angel coming down from heaven, surrounded by a cloud with a rainbow over his head. The word rainbow could be translated halo, a halo around his head. His face shone like the sun and his feet were like pillars of fire. And in his hand was a small scroll that had been opened. He stood with his right foot on the sea and his left foot on the land. And he gave a great shout like the roar of a lion. And when he shouted, the seven thunders answered. Verse 4. When the seven thunders spoke, I was about to write. But I heard a voice from the heavens saying, Keep secret or seal up what the seven thunders said and do not write it down. So here we have a message that John was able to receive, evidently, but he was told not to share it. We don't know, of course, what that message was because it is sealed up. It is unknowable for us right now. But throughout these chapters, we have been seeing several things. First of all, we have seen the persecution of the church. Emperor Domitian and the Roman Empire persecuted Christians for their faith. They had one Lord and one God and would not bow to another. Domitian wanted to be called Lord and God and be worshipped. And so persecution broke out on Christians because of their faithfulness, their devotion, their loyalty to Jesus Christ. Another thing we have seen in the book of Revelation is problems. Persecution on the church, but problems in the world. Problems of natural disaster, problems of tribulation and trials, problems of judgment and wrath problems throughout the world. We have also seen the patient endurance of the churches. And fourthly, we have seen the piety of the Christian. This is all a message for us today as well as for the church of any age. Persecution may break out at any time on the church. And even now in some areas, Christians are persecuted. We have serious problems in our world today. We are called to patient endurance while we live the Christian life in a world that is often opposed to the Christian faith. And one of the main characteristics of the Christian ought to be piety. We ought not to compromise with worldly values. We ought not to compromise our faith to just get along in this world. The message of God for the Christian is times are tough, but hang in there. Justice will come, and victory will come. We'll pick it up at verse 5. Then the angel I saw standing on the sea and on the land raised his right hand toward heaven. He swore an oath in the name of the one who lives forever and ever, who created the heavens and everything in them, the earth and everything in it, the sea and everything in it. He said, there will be no more delay. When the seventh angel blows his trumpet, God's mysterious plan will be fulfilled. It will happen just as he announced to his servants, the prophets. Then the voice from heaven spoke to me again, Go and take the open scroll from the hand of the angel who is standing on the sea and on the land. So I went to the angel and told him to give me the small scroll. Yes, take it and eat it. Take it and eat it means that he ought to read it. 
He ought to learn it. He ought to digest its contents. We use this same kind of symbolism today, don't we? If we see a teenager reading through a novel and doing it in one or two days, we will say, boy, you sure devoured that book. That is the same concept here. It will be sweet as honey in your mouth, but it will turn sour in your stomach. As he reads this book, this scroll with eagerness, there is a sweetness to it, but as it is swallowed, as it is digested, it becomes sour. So I took the small scroll from the hand of the angel and ate it. It was sweet in my mouth, but when I swallowed it, it turned sour in my stomach. The message of God comes first as sweetness and grace. But when sin is found, there is also judgment. For the Christian, judgment was at the cross, at the cross of Christ. That's why Romans chapter 8 verse 1 says, There is no more condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. He takes this book this message of God, enjoys the message of God, but when it is swallowed, when it is digested, when it is learned that there is judgment upon the sinful systems of the world, it brings bitterness. Verse 11, then I was told, you must prophesy again about many peoples, nations, languages, and kings. So the angel and the small scroll, it's an interlude, a recess from the judgments. Chapter 11 will also take us into a little bit of a recess, a respite, but then the judgments continue. One judgment laid upon another. Well, thank you for joining us today. May God bless you and keep you.